right praise, right relationship. That's the theme for the, the weeks here in October that we've been kind of building a little bit. If you recall last week, it was introduced in such a powerful gospel where we saw the 10 lepers, the 10 lepers who were calling out to Jesus for healing and received their healing. But only one, realizing he was healed, came back and offered right praise to Jesus, came back and thanked him for the great I mean, think about it. If, if you were ostracized out of society because of leprosy and you were cleansed, I think that'd make you a very happy person, but also a very thankful person. And so we saw in it, in this one individual, whom we're told wasn't even really one of the chosen people, this one individual not only came back to give right praise, but must have had the right relationship with God to know that he needed to return. Now we come to this week, and I've got to admit, this week is kind of curious, and I'm going to get to the curiosity in just a moment. We all love a good conversion story, don't we? I always love to hear about someone who went through a big reversion or a conversion to the faith. I mean, there are some really good, powerful stories out there that we hear sometimes. The Protestants love to do it all the time. Any new convert to their faith, they love to drag them out and, and parade them around and look this new person and they give a witness talk about how Jesus touched their lives and now everything in their life is so different and they've completely handed themselves over to Jesus and, and how wonderful it is to hear those stories. We also have in the Catholic faith, the same thing happened that some people will actually realize that the Catholic faith is the right way. Some of my favorite stories are like Dr. Scott Hahn and his wife, Kimberly. I mean, both Baptist preachers became Catholics and they're now some of the best Catholics you'll ever be able to, to experience. I mean, anytime Dr. Scott Hahn gives a talk or, or I hear Kimberly Hahn give a talk, I love everything that they say. It's just so well thought out. It's so well put together and demonstrates to me that from deep within, they now know who is their God. They know that Jesus Christ is their Lord, and they could never imagine their lives without the Eucharist and without the Mass. Go listen to anything, and you'll see what I'm talking about. It's just there. One of the more recent notorious conversion stories, which most people don't know about, is this Shia LaBeouf, this, this actor, if you will, who was just a secular person, didn't really care much for the faith, but was given an opportunity to portray Padre Pio in a movie. Now, any person who knows Padre Pio would have said no immediately. There's no, I, there's no way I think I could portray Padre Pio. I mean, think about it. The man was a walking saint. When he was on earth, he'd be in the confessional sometimes for 14, 15 hours. And you better not go in there and try to leave something out because he'd call you on it. But this, this Shia, he took, he took the, 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 the opportunity and said yes. And so one of the things that he was told is, you should go and find out more. So in California, he went to this monastery and spent some time with some of the Franciscans there just to get to know the, the, the life and, the, and the, the, the lifestyle. And one of them immediately said to him, you should understand the Mass because that was central to Padre Pio's existence, really. But I recall Padre Pio was saying Mass before the Second Vatican Council, so of course he had to go and learn the traditional Latin Mass. Something happened to him as he was getting ready for this part, as he was, you know, because he, he had to actually say the Mass for film, so he had to practice it and he had to get to know it. But something happened to him while he was preparing. The beauty of what he was doing struck him. And he began to see Christ in a whole new way. And this is before he says, he actually, if, if you wanna know more about it, he does a great interview with Bishop Barron on this, and he tells the whole story. It's how powerful the beauty of Catholicism can touch somebody. And he hadn't even learned about the life of Padre Pio yet, about the things that he was gonna to have to portray, the things that he was gonna to have to, to emulate in the movie and such a powerful, powerful story. And we see something going on here. There's a reciprocal that ought to be happening, I think, for every believer. There's this reciprocal action that should be going on, right praise, right relationship. Well, when I was discussing it with some people before I finished it, is it right relationship and right praise? And we went back and forth and back and forth because both are needed, both. 
are needed. What, what happened for Shia was that the right relationship started to fall into place by dealing with a form of right praise. So which came first? It's hard to answer. If you listen to the interview, I couldn't tell you. But it's evident that both began to happen. Right praise, right relationship. And yet so many Catholics today, we think we've got it right. But here's the challenge, because I find that even in my own life, sometimes one or the other might dominate a little bit. I might be really strong in my relationship with God, but the praise is kind of weak. And when the praise is kind of weak, eventually the relationship starts to suffer. As the relationship starts to suffer, I have to revive it by getting right praise. Once I get the right praise again, you see the, the cycle? It, it's sometimes, I always say, it's sometimes a little tough being a Catholic because we've got to really put a lot of effort into it always. It's not just something that we flip on and off. Oh, it's, you know, it's that, and we Americans, we love to compartmentalize our lives. We like to have, you know, like this, all right, this is my Catholic compartment, okay? It's Sunday, it's 12 o'clock, I'm on my way to Mass, I'm doing Catholicism, that's it, okay, it's over, and I'm done. And there's no relationship with Jesus the rest of the week. That's a challenge because what we're hearing in our scriptures is calling us to write praise, but write praise is a way of life. It's not something I just do once in a while. But if I'm giving right praise to God with my life, if I'm magnifying God with my life, well, then I have a right relationship with him as well. And that's when all of the relationships in my lives, my life, really start to show something different. Did you find today's gospel a little odd? I always found this parable just a little bit odd because first off in the lectionary cycle, it kind of just appears. Last week's um, 10 lepers, that was quite a few verses before. There's a whole section that's left out in chapter 17. Today we jump into this little parable and there's two oddities about it, the way it opens and the way it closes. The way it opens, Jesus talks about the necessity to pray always. How did that jump out of last week? Because it really doesn't. But then he closes with that line that, like everything you just said, Jesus, where did that come from? Will the Son of Man find faith when he returns? He was just talking about this judge that's going to render a just decision because of this persistent woman. Where did that come from? Do you know what was left out? See, you didn't do your homework. Got to do your homework every week. See if there's a gap somewhere. There's a big gap. And in it is Jesus talking about the second coming. There's this long, some, I think, 20 verses of Luke's gospel that doesn't show up in the lectionary at all. Where Jesus talks about, you know, two will be out in the field, one will be taken, another will be left. All, all of that stuff that we hear about the end times. We're getting towards the end of Luke's gospel here. We're, we're getting towards the meaty part of the, the end where, yeah, there's going to be a lot of talk of judgment. I know Catholics' favorite word is judgment. We don't like to hear the word. There's going to be a judgment. And he's talking about how this is going to happen. And then he breaks into, you should be praying at all times. You should be preparing at all times. You should be ready at any given moment. And what does that mean? That I have a right relationship with God by giving him right praise. Then all of a sudden it makes sense. Will he find any faith? Because he's talking to his own people at the time who were giving lip service to God. These are people who just give lip service. So we have to ask ourselves, where are we at? Where are we at as a people? Where are we at as Catholics today? I, I really truly believe that we really need to have a revival in the Catholic faith. And that's going to come through giving right praise to God. There's no other way. Right praise, I'll say it again, is not just the prayers we offer, which are extremely important, but living the life he calls us to. Living a life of virtue and holiness. Living a life centered around the Holy Eucharist. This is what touched Shia LaBeouf. Just even focusing for a moment, thinking that he could be Padre Pio. And for that moment, recognizing 
what's the center of all of our faith. And that's a right relationship with the Blessed Sacrament. What destroys our relationship with God? Sin. Sin. Sin is all around us. Let, we, we, can, we can be honest. As I said last week, we have this leprosy within our souls called our fallen nature. We have this inclination, if you will, sometimes to sin. But sin damages relationships. Every sin ever committed it will damage the relationship with God or with one another. And so a big part of the gospel message that Jesus keeps talking about over and over, I know we tend to not hear that part, change, convert, repent, reform. The kingdom of God is at hand. Be ready because the second coming is imminent. And I'm going to say with the utmost confidence right now, I believe the second coming is imminent. I believe Armageddon is on the horizon. If our world leaders can start talking about it, so can I. All right, I was going to talk about it, whether they talked about it or not. Yes, we have to be prepared. And what does that call us to? Establishing our relationship once again with God. By confessing our sins, by turning our lives around, by repenting and changing and becoming good and holy people. That, my dear brothers and sisters, will be a greater witness to the world than anything else. Offering right praise. I, I love that reading with Moses. Do you ever, I, I get a kick out of it. I just, I don't know why. Every time I hear it, I kind of giggle a little bit because it's absurd. Okay, Moses, I need you to just stand with your hands up. And as long as you can keep your hands up, I'll favor the people and they'll win the battle. Now, it's a symbol of right praise. It's a symbol of right praise, Moses offering right praise. But notice the, what I really think is, is great about the reading is, notice, I can only do this for a little while. My arms are going to start to get tired, just like Moses. Moses' arms started to get a little tired, but he got some help. That is part of right praise. I don't just do it alone. Have you ever run into that person that said, you know, I can sit in my living room, I can be all by myself, just me and Jesus, and I have a, a good relationship, just me and Jesus. And I say, hmm, that's not very biblical. Because even biblically, we're asked to be part of a community. We're asked to be part of something else. And that's why one of the important things that we need to start working on more and more, even in this community here, are establishing like small faith communities, so that I'm not just alone in my faith. I'm not just sitting there. But people are supporting me. People are helping me. You're helping one another. That's why we have communal gatherings on a weekly basis, if not more often. Offering right praise so that we can establish stronger relationships. It all kind of ties together. And so my dear brothers and sisters, next week we're going to anticipate the attitude. We're going to wrap this up with the attitude is what I want to call it. You're going to have the, the Pharisee and the tax collector in the temple talk about an attitude. That Pharisee had a real attitude. But the tax collector got it right. And it's a challenge for you and for me. Do I have the humility to admit that I'm a fallen individual? Do I have the humility to admit that my actions have damaged relationships with God and others? Do I have the humility to approach, yes, even I have to do it, approach another priest and offer my confession and receive absolution, that takes humility. And that next week is what we're going to focus on a lot more. But suffice it for this week, will Jesus find faith? And when he comes back and he says those words directly to you as an individual, will he find faith? Ask yourself, do I really truly have faith? Do I really believe in Jesus Christ? And the gauge and the answer to the question has to be, yes, my entire life. Everything in my life is for God. Everything in my life I offer back to him in right praise, and out of that right relationship, he then blesses me with so much. And that's what I bring to others. Right praise, right relationship. And we have to keep working and keep working, because as Jesus said, always. He didn't say pray a little bit. He didn't say once in a while. He didn't say praise God here or there. He said always. 
when I was in the seminary, we were asked to take this one course, which was then called Telecare, to make a little public service announcement. And I decided that I wanted to make a video that was about praying. So it would have these vignettes of people saying prayers throughout the day, a little something in the morning before we eat meals, getting together and praying a rosary, et cetera, et cetera. And I said, the tagline was pray always, but pray always. And so I encourage you all, pray always, but we need to be praying always. God bless you.